Hello guys and welcome to my new video. So it's been a while since I've done a, a restoration druid guide or basically a resto druid oriented video. So today I've decided to do a preparation guide for resto druids coming into Ontoros, coming into 7.35, what kind of legendaries, talents, gear um, and things like that to look out for. Basically I know in the first couple of days when Ontoros is released people are going to be so confused about which trinkets to use. I have tier 24 set, I have tier 21 2 set or 4 set, which one do I use? Which legendary should I upgrade first? There's going to be a lot of questions coming out in the first few days. And keep in mind, I am basically using, uh, I am basically looking at the questionably epic Resto Druid preparation guide, which provides some really, really good insight into what, uh, into what legendaries to use, what talents and things like that. And um, I feel it's a really good starting guide. And I'm basically going, in this video, I'm going to give you my perspective of what I'm going to be doing. And basically an overview of how I feel about legendaries and things like that. But please, please check out the questionably epic guide as well. It's going to be updated when things are co uh, coming out. It, there's some really, really good information there. So first of all, coins. First of all, coins. Uh, this is something that pe uh, people tend to forget. They're going to... Tumus Aguer, or Antorus is going to use the same coins as Tumus Aguer was using. So make sure that you have six coins before Antorus is released. By having six coins before it's released, you go do on you go do on Taurus. You you coin it on three bosses, then you go back to Dal uh, Dalaran and get the get the three coins that are available for the on Taurus week. So you can have a total of like nine coins for the raid. There's a total of eleven bosses. Six of those drop tier. So in the first week, you can technically coin. At the start, you should only use the coins on tier bosses because you want to pick up tier 21 4 set as soon as possible it is a pretty it is a very good set uh, it is just a lot easier than what tier 20 was or is um, and you want to pick up tier 21 as soon as possible i know that a lot of guilds don't prioritize healers for gear so coins are going to be like your best friend in order to get the gear or the trinkets that you might need um, so let's look at some of the legendaries and which legendaries you should upgrade because we know in the previous patches uh, the way the blizzard used to do it is like you you collect these certain currencies for the week and you have to reach like 50 in order to upgrade your legendary to item level 1000 now in the previous patches it used to take around maybe a week maybe a bit less for you to get those uh, uh those currencies to upgrade the legendary so you can kind of be stuck by upgrading the wrong legendary in the first weeks so you can kind of be stuck so there is a lot of emphasis on which legendary to upgrade. The problem is with Rest of Druids, it seems that there's going to be a lot of situational legendaries which fit uh, specific fights, which fit specific damage patterns. So there is really no one legendary that's going to be am amazing or fit for every fight. But there are a couple options that are kind of going to be really good or might suit your style. So if we look at the legendaries that are going to be good, I covered in previous videos the legendary Helm. A chameleon song i've covered it a couple of times before it seems to do a lot of healing especially in constant aoe fights because i know it's an rng legendary but it's using a deck system so technically there's a specific set of procs that are going to happen no matter what and when those procs happen on constant aoe fights you're just going to be rejuvenating like crazy and the damage doesn't have to be there like it just has to come in in the next couple of seconds or like Technically, you can come in the next 20 seconds or whatever, and you, you still get some value out of it. Um, the downsides of Legendary Helm, like I did in the previous video, if you have the Helm equipped and you get a proc, and then you realize you have to use your Displacer Beast to go into bear form, and if you don't have the Tree of Life talent, then you can't go back into the into a Chameleon Song buff again. It, if you shift into bear, and you shift out, you won't get the buff anymore if you don't have the Tree of Life talent. So there's some weird playstyle going in there where you can toggle and toggle out of the buff if you use the Tree of Life talent. But if you don't have it and you have you have to use Displacer Beast, then the buff is gone. So on a fight, so there's going to be you might have to soak something or you going there's going to be a lot of movement. The Displacer Beast might be used a lot. You have to consider that. And now the second legendary that's supposed to be quite good for situational fights is the shoulders. So the shoulders apparently are back. Uh, which is quite interesting because a lot of the times, uh, like, first of all, Sholas did lose a lot of value by not using tier 19, but they still seem to be pretty good. The problem with Sholas is that it's really hard to actually determine the true potential or true value of Sholas because it affects so many different things. Uh, and it's really hard to say, Sholas are going to give you 10% increased healing, Sholas are going to give you 5% increase. it's really hard. There is a tool that's available by Fiden um, that 
it's called Resto Druid uh, Legendary Analyzer that kind of gives you an 80% uh, evaluation of the shoulder output, which can be used to see uh, the potential of the shoulders if you're really confused about whether the shoulders are doing anything for you. But at the end of the day, shoulders are all about damage patterns. Shoulders are going to extend the rejuvenation by 9 seconds. It used to be like 15 back in the day, but it's 9 seconds. So technically, your rejuvenation could be around like 20 seconds, depending on your persistence levels. Uh, so you could have like a 30 second rejuvenation. But that depends if the person is full HP. Now, you look at the fights like, let's say Scissors, for example, where there is AoE damage coming to the raid, but there are certain parts or certain... Uh, intermissions of the fight where people might be full HP and your rejuvenations will be ticking and you'll be like just if the rejuvenation will last a bit longer I know there is damage coming in, in the next 10 20 seconds I know the damage is coming in there I just need and but, with, but without the shoulders the rejuvenation is not gonna last long enough but if you use the shoulders you can see that when the people are full HP the rejuvenation gets extended so when the next wave of damage comes in you're like okay the shoulders definitely worked here Definitely worth it. So you need to look into the type of the fight. So the fights like the suit is uh, that suit shows the best would be like where the damage comes in and the uh, Everyone gets healed up and then like in the next 10 to 20 seconds the damage comes in again Shoulders can be great value, but it's also worth noting that shoulders with the helm also have some kind of a synergy going on because with the helm you're going to uh, with the helm proc in the tree form you're going to be spamming rejuvenations like a madman and those rejuvenations are going to be affected by your shoulders. And there really isn't a true fight with every, where everyone all the time are low HP. So technically, there is a high chance that the highest throughput legendaries are going to be Helm and the shoulders in the future. There is a high chance that the, that combination is going to provide the highest throughput in like constant AoE fights. So it's worth considering that. And uh, now you have the other two legendaries which are considered the safe options. Why do you consider the other two legendaries which is Pridus? And balance. I consider those the safe options. Why? Because Helm and Shoulders take up tier sets. Right now, you're probably be going to be running something like tier 24 set and tier 19 2 set, which is arguably the default build with something like Valence and the Class Ring, so all of the Arch Druid. Um, and you'll be running like Prosperity. So, this is like a, a very popular build that's going around for in Resto Druid community. You'll probably be running something like this, and you're like, do I upgrade Helm right now? And realize that this helm might not work on a certain fight do i take that risk so if you don't want to take that risk at the start it's very possible or very advisable at least for me to maybe even look at upgrading like pridus or valence um pridus is a very good choice for so pridus by default does around five percent healing by just giving you the bubble and you take damage it gives you around five percent so you don't look completely down it provides some kind of a hps in the meters if you are interested in that kind of thing uh, so it's not completely like non throughput trinket. At the end of the day, Pridus is one of the best legendaries if you're unsure about a fight and you think like I might die or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use bear bear in, in time because I'm not sure about how fight works. So Pridus can be really good. Now Valence on Dora Choice is also a very good burst legendary, but you have to keep in mind that there's quite a few amazing trinkets. Unlike in Tomb Sagaris, there's quite a few amazing trinkets in on Taurus that most likely are going to diminish Valence because there's going to be amazing trinkets, so the difference between the amazing trinkets and the balance is not going to be that big when compared to Tumas Argeras. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to upgrade Pridus. And my reasoning why is because I want to use my tier 24 set, I want to use my tier 19 2 set for as long as possible before I get tier 21 4 set. Uh, Pridus also interacts with the way that tier 21 works and the way that Yasera's gift works. Yasera's gift works is, is that you as a primary target needs to be full HP before you say this gift is going to jump to someone else and start healing them. So if you're not full HP, it's going to, like, let's say if you're hanging around at like 90%, so you say this gift is going to heal you and you're like, I'm not the primary target, like, I'm not going to, it's not going to save anyone's life. So having pride on yourself is going to allow you to be full HP or protected for longer. Now this is going to work even better in Mythic where I'm going to, where I'm hoping to, like, do most of the progression. So in mythic fights there might be some abilities I'm not quite sure of or might be hitting really hard and I want to stay as full HP as possible so my option is going to be Pridus. And this is my personal opinion, uh, this is how I decided to do it. If you're not doing like mythic, if you want to focus on heroic you might have other options. For example the legendary chest. The legendary chest I did a video about this, it, it has complete, it, it has somewhat interaction with tier 21. 
4 set, not a 2 set, it just affects the 4 set, it affects the Isaiah's Gift healing. Now because of that, it seems to be it seems to be doing pretty well in the heroic version based on the questionably epic guide because I didn't really test the heroic too much, but it seems to be doing quite well in heroic purely for the fact that it um it's the Isaiah's Gift healing is probably going to be the first thing that heals a person that uh, takes some damage. And in heroic, a person might take 10% of the damage and the Isaiah's Gift is going to heal them all first, be, like maybe even before anyone else. So, and technically there might not be that much damage. So healing up someone from 90 to 100% HP, that might be a big portion of the whole fight in heroic, depending on a fight if there's not enough damage. Now on mythic where there's a lot of damage coming in, it's not going to be that significant, it doesn't seem to be doing that significant, especially it seems to scale not that well. So if you are planning to do mythic content, legendary chest is looking just okay-ish. It's not looking amazing as the other situation legendaries that I mentioned before. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, now we can also look at some of the talents that are going to be used in Antorus. So by using the tier 20 4 set and tier 19 2 set, you probably were running something similar to Prosperity, Displacer Beast, Guardian Infinity, or Balanced Affinity, or Feral Affinity, doesn't really matter, Typhoon, and then probably Cultivation, Germination, and Flourish, or Spring Blossom. Spring Blossoms and Germination are very interchangeable, they're very fight dependent, there's really, from my personal experience, from my personal uh, healing style, on a stacked up fights, let's say Desolate Host inside Spirit Realm, if I'm using Spring Blossoms, if I'm using Germination, I'm seeing around the same HPS uh, numbers, but I'm seeing a lot more mana saved with Spring Blossoms, because with Spring Blossoms, just, I'm just placing a Fluorescence and just not worrying. With Germination, I tend to go a bit overboard, just pre-hotting everyone, then pre-hotting them again, so there's hots everywhere. Uh, and I tend to go a little lower mana, but my HPS seems to be around the same with both. You might see something different, but that's my personal experience. So on a fight so there's going to be a lot of stacking up, I'm gonna go with Spring Blossoms. It's gonna save me mana, it's gonna be doing around the same HPS, it might not do the same thing for you, but on stacked up fights, Spring Blossoms is great. And with tier 21, that's not going to change. With tier 21, there is no real interaction with tier 21 with any of the talents. So Spring Blossoms in Germination, if people are stacked up, Spring Blossom is going to work great. If people are a little spread out, or if there is a dot on people that last for quite a while, which there are a couple of fights like that, Germination can be a great option. Make sure if you're using, uh, if you're using different kind of health bars, make sure you have the debuffs enabled on them, so you can see the early debuffs. Because in, if you, if you're not able to see which person has debuffs at the very start, you can't play Germination. You're not sure if they're going to have a debuff for a long time. So that's a very very important tip. And also to keep in mind with Tier 21. Once you pick up tier 21 4 set, you most likely will swap out of Prosperity. You're not going to be running Prosperity anymore, it's back to the scenario where it just provides uh, a bit more HPS, provides tank stability, and you most likely will be running Scenario World. Besides that, everything else is kind of the same. There are suggestions that you might be using Incarnation Tree of Life instead of Cultivation for certain fights where you need burst healing. Incarnation, is, there's nothing wrong with Incarnation, don't think that Cultivation is the absolute go to talent for every single fight, use your brain on a certain fight. If you need uh, like a really high burst, Incarnation Tree of Art can save you. Even in the tier 90 uh, uh, talent choice, Spring Blossoms, Germination, Inner Peace can be good for certain situations. We saw that in Maidens when it first, uh, when it first was released. Maidens damage pants lined up or like when you had to break the shield, lined up perfectly with Trank. And inner, if you use if you use inner piece, lined up perfectly with two minute trank, so you could actually utilize trank really really well. Now you probably won't be using inner piece at the very start, and I don't recommend you to use inner piece at the very start. I recommend you to try out spring blossoms and germination, um, or actually probably germination is the safest option if you're completely unsure about the fight. You try out germination and you see like mm, two minute trank maybe could be used. So it's not a complete garbage talent. It can be used, but germination is a safer choice. Spring blossom is even a safer choice if you know people are stacked up. And after that, tier 100 is uh, just basically flourished, then nothing, then nothing really has changed um, with that. So let's look at the trinket. So the reason why I said Valence trinket is kind of losing value for a lot of the healers. A lot of healers are like, Valence used to be biz for me, but right now it's not really that great because of the awesome trinkets that are the two new Pantheon trinkets, the Amatul's Vision, which I am super, super excited for because it's basically Arcano Crystal 2.0. We know Arcano Crystal 1.0 is one of the best trinkets for Estro Druids. So having an Amatur's Vision 
a new legendary that doesn't take up a legendary slot is going to be insane. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of DPS classes needed, like Shadow Priest, there's Warlocks, there's Mages. There's a lot of, a lot of DPS classes that are going to be needing on this. So, we're not sure how it's going to drop. If it's going to be personal loot, I almost got to prefer personal loot because a lot of guilds are going to be optimizing or prioritizing DPS before the healers. But Amulet's Vision is going to be one of the best trinkets. Now, you also have the secondary Pantheon trinket, which is Enor's Compassion, which is also supposed to be a very good trinket. The problem is, you can only wear one of those. So you either pick Amatos Vision or Enar's Compassion, and you kind of go with that. Now, you also have the secondary slot trinket. So, what is the Resto Drew without Mana Regen trinket? Dark Moon deck promises was probably the most widely used trinket by Resto Druids, and a bit like this priest as well, because these we're, Resto Druids and uh, this priest are kind of like uh, preemptive healers. They're they're not really reactive healers. You need to make sure that you're placing rejuves. Uh, you need to make sure that you're placing shields and things like that um, before the damage comes out. So you, you can waste a lot of mana in that way. Technically, a Resto Druid can go oom even if there's no damage incoming because you can just go crazy with pre hotting and just pre hotting everyone and the damage might be really small and you waste mana, especially if you don't know the damage patterns. So having any kind of mana regen trinket is going to be huge. At the start of the Antorus raid, Dark Moon Deck Promises is probably going to be a go-to trinket because it's still one of the best mana region trinkets, but it is lower item level. Now, think, uh, there is another trinket, this Karafi of the Searing Light, which is basically the only or one of the best Antorus mana region trinkets uh, in the raid. So you're going to be looking to... It's also an intellect trinket, so it's going to be providing much more int in the Dark Moon Deck Promises because of the item level scaling. So you're going to be looking to pick up Karathis of the Seeing Light as soon as possible. I honestly will say that Rest of Druids and probably uh, this priest are probably the best choice for these kind of trinkets, just based on the logs. If you look at the logs for progression files and things like that, Rest of Druids use, to this day, they are using Dark Moon Deck Promises. I'm pretty sure nearly 90% of the people who are progressing, or 90% of the people who are logging really high, they'll be using Dark Moon Deck Promises. Um, so, Resto Druids are definitely going to be looking to pick up Karafi's, uh, Karafi of Searing Light and Amadou's Vision, if possible, or Enor's Compassion. So, by having these awesome trinkets, your balance is going to be kind of plummeting. But the point is, at the start, what are the odds of you getting these trinkets at the moment? So, so you might be end up using balance for a long, long time, depending on your look. Uh, start, start priority-wise, start priority is... It could change, there might be things changing up, but... By not using an add-on like Resto Druid stat weight, you won't know. Use the add-on, it'll tell you exactly for each fight what is the, your stat priority, and then you'll know what to stack or what to get more and things like that. Uh, we might, we, we're not sure how the stat priority is going to change, but, with that, but you got to use the add-on. So an overview of everything, it's really hard to say, especially with the tier combos. I actually didn't really cover the tier combos before the video gets really, really long. Um, like I said, you'll be running with tier 24 set most likely and tier 19 2 set. There is a possibility, let's say you get tier 21 2 set. Let's say you just get the two pieces and you're wondering, what do I do now? The dream is to get tier 21 4 set. That's the dream at the moment. And then po possibly get the shoulders and the helm. And then get the Pantheon trinket and then get a Karafe trinket. And then you're kind of set. You're sitting really, really nicely with the gear. But... There's a there's a fat chance that's going to happen. So if you get like tier twenty uh, tier twenty one two set, um, you can't possibly go with tier twenty four set and tier twenty one two set. Keep in mind the tier twenty one two set is going to lose out some of the value because of how it interacts with tier twenty one four set. Tier twenty one four set is going to allow your your cells give to heal people faster and move on to the next person applying the dreamer buff and the dreamer buff is applied by tier 21 2 set so but because of how item levels are going to scale up it's going to be really hard to determine which is going to be a better option but keep in mind the only thing that's certain right now is that if you're going to break tier 24 set if you're going to break and you you're thinking in your head tier 22 set could be good no if you're going to break tier 24 set and start using tier 22 set don't that's the worst thing. Tier 22 set is terrible. You're better off using higher item level gear or anything else. Tier 21 4 set is pretty good on stacked of fights. On, on spread out fights, it's, it kind of loses out value. 
but by breaking tier 24 set and using tier 22 set it's really not worth it especially if you have better higher item levels uh, or off pieces so this has been a kind of an explanation video uh, for my thinking of how to prepare for Antorus. Like I said, I'm probably going to be upgrading um, Pridus first. I'm going to be aiming to get tier 21 4 set at the very start if it's possible. I am looking forward to Amato's vision if I can get my hands on it. And I absolutely will need a mana regen trinket because I know I pre hot a lot and I can go a little bit too crazy with uh, rejuvenations, especially with germination. So I am looking for Karafi of Searing Light as soon as possible as well. Uh, I like to, again, uh, reference back to the questionably epic guide. I think it was really, really amazing job being done here. Uh, I recommend you to check out this page when Antorus is released. There's probably going to be updates made straight away because even if some of the stuff I'm saying here might not be the most correct, not many people, not, there's not a lot of information about when to replace tier uh tier 19 two set b between the tier 21 two set or whatever there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be circulating at the very start of on taurus it's about, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be changing uh, this is what i'm going to be doing and um, so hopefully this might have shed some light about what could be options for you you can make a decision based on the things that i said let me know how you feel about this video let me know how you feel about the rest of jewels I am super excited for Antorus, I'm super excited about uh, tier 21, and I'm super excited the amazing trinkets. For the first time in this expansion, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about the trinkets that are coming out on Taurus. I'm excited to see how Amatos Vision is going to drop. Uh, so let me know how you feel about the whole video, let me know how you feel about the whole legendaries and things like that. Leave comments, like the video, it, it really helps out the channel. Thank you for watching this guide, and I'll see you in my next guide.